What in the world is going on here? Well, it looks like we have ourselves another project to work on. This time it's going to be Cable Drag Chain. And I have done a motion study. I'll be showing you where to find that in the menus. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And then show you how to reset your motion studies. They show up in the browser. You can right click and edit. And control the level of time that has passed. It comes in 100 step maximum motion studies. So I have set my speed either fast or slow. In this case I'm using slow and I choose a joint and that is how you can do motion studies. From the assemble menu you can create uh, brand new motion studies near the bottom right above the bill of materials but previous to that you have to establish motion links okay so from the assemble menu there motion links that's where you're going to create these relationships between joints all right you can see i have one two three revolute joints here and if i edit the joint i'll show you my motion is set to revolute type, okay? There are many other types of motion joints on here. Rigid is the only one that remains completely static and does not move. The revolute is typically what we would use for a robotics application, all right? And then in your motion, you can also set your minimum and maximum and the reset position of zero. So again, I'm showing you how to set up those Revolute joints there. That should be familiar to many of you who have been following along on some of the other video tutorials, especially Vex Robotics. I also did a little bit of rendering, and then we're gonna work forward i'm going in reverse order right now from the render menu i did go into my physical material and i changed that to a uh, laminate blue matte plastic and then on my appearance i also put a glossy uh, paint metallic blue all right now let's work backwards and get to pre-duplication it is possible to create some joints and then duplicate with joints but that's typically for larger projects and if I was going to continue to make an entire, like, let's say, three or four foot long chain of cable drag, I would duplicate with joints. However, what I did instead was I converted these bodies to a component and then started um, making duplicates of the component. So you'll notice once it's changed to a component, I also named it. Now it's down here, and there are no more bodies that are separate as top level browser uh, items. I just have the chain link that I named, and then you can see the original body is embedded within that as part of its component. A component could consist of multiple bodies. Now let's go back even a little bit further and let's talk about how we got this body to the state that it's in. So we're going to be working for the remainder of this video on just this body in isolation. If you are able to produce a body like this or similar to this at home, then you will be able to easily duplicate components and create the motion links. So let's revert all the way back here 
to the original sketch and have a look at that first sketch because those of you who know the way I operate in Fusion I prefer parametric modeling over anything else so I did try to define all of this stuff parametrically edit this sketch I set up a 40 millimeter distance between holes five millimeter gap for the opening and a 4.8 millimeter gap for the peg I have 3d printed these that fits good so if there's a tolerance in there that needs to exist so that there's uh, a little bit of space you still have a certain amount of friction associated with it but you have to have a little bit of space so that it can actually rotate and slide um, and then you'll notice also let me go ahead and temporarily put some dimensions on here so you can see the approach that I used R13 on all of these uh, so each of these would be an R13 If you're playing along at home, you're going to want to have similar values. We also need to know this dimension right here, 14. So that allows us to then have enough information where you should be able to produce that sketch at home. Now, I did just go ahead after having done all that. I want to finish sketch. I did just go ahead and extrude that whole thing up so it was just one giant block, right? There's one giant block just sitting there. And then I begin to use extrusions to remove material starting with that opening right there and then add uh, material also by virtue of additional extrusions so this had an extra one millimeter added on top of it and then this had an extra one millimeter added on top of it as well okay so I've created a multi-level multi-surface uh, face here using just one sketch now as you know uh, a sketch that's fully constrained like that uh, it's much easier for me to just move this body down and duplicate the work on the other side and that's exactly what I did so I'm going to change this view so you can see the top of the piece and then I'm going to show where I moved it down and then I essentially I just repeated that workflow okay repeating that workflow to try to get it far enough along that it is the same on both sides all right now we're going to go in and we're going to create a new sketch at this time i'll turn the other one off so we can focus on this new sketch which is uh, essentially just on the uh, wall plane so that wall plane right there is what i use to create that sketch and another sketch on this wall plane and I set myself up now to perform some additional extrusions okay so as I went through and began to slowly extrude out you can see that I developed the shape that I was looking for there all right Again, the wall plane originally, and then this other front wall plane to extrude out more material. And then it's time to do some finesse with this little, uh, you'll notice, fillets right there to improve some support. We don't want this breaking during use. 
So I'll show you again another fillet on the opposite side to improve that performance. And finally, a uh, fillet on this edge and a fillet on the opposite edge and a sketch to come back in on that new surface and improve that area right there so that it closes off. I'm going to reproduce that same workflow and I'm going to slow down and explain that a little bit further. My first extrusion drags that area down based off of this original sketch right here. Drag that area that I have highlighted in blue down. All right. Which that opened up part of my body that I needed to be solid. So what did I have to do instead is I came back and I made a new sketch right there and then used that as an extrusion to join and close off. All right. That gets me far enough along that I'm ready to put the finishing touches on this beautiful product, which is fillets and chamfers. Fillets and chamfers, that's a rule fillet there, and again on the bottom, same side. And then a rule fillet here, obviously. And then this would be an obstruction area that I need to clear, so I made one additional sketch. Uh, in that area to clear out some more material. All right. That material has been cleared out and I chamfered it. All right. Chamfering in this spot right here increases the angle that I can max it out at, just slightly above 90 degrees. At that point in time, that's where we meet back where we were talking about earlier. We did the rendering. Okay. We did the duplication. We did the Revolute joints. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the joint visibility on so that you can see how those Revolute joints came together slowly, one at a time. Animate joint. So that is 90 and negative 90 with a reset value of 0. All right. And then again, duplication and joint. And again, duplication and joint. And then finally, as we discussed, we have to create relationships in order to have the ability to finally perform our motion study at the end. With the motion study, all I did was set a point at the 100 value and slowly move it at the lowest speed using backward and forth instead of one direction. It's also possible to loop it, but that ends up not looking exactly like what I wanted it to look like. There you can see it hits a maximum in this video of just 60 and then it reverts back. Okay. So, hope you have fun playing with this at home and enjoy this new project to do some cable drag chain.